Hello everyone and welcome to my 2022 Stanley Cup playoff bracket and my predictions for this year. It's been a very interesting year for regular season hockey and let's see it translate in the Stanley Cup playoffs this year. So we're doing this video right now and after I record this we will be recording our eight matchup previews. First four of them, which play today, will be released today, and the ones that play tomorrow will be released tomorrow. So, let's get straight into it. We're just about six hours away from playoff hockey as I'm recording this, and by the time we get to the start of playoff hockey, and when I upload this video, it's going to be a good four or five hours away, so let's get to it. So first, Colorado and Nashville. I think this would be known to many as, honestly, being a fast series. One that Nashville doesn't have much of a chance in. And you wouldn't be wrong. That's for sure. You wouldn't be wrong. Colorado has had a very strong offense, pretty good defense as well. Darcy Kemper playing very well in net. Colorado's special teams also very good. And of course we have that first line, the potent first line of Rantanen, McKinnon, Landeskog. For Nashville, what a season Roman Yossi has had. Definitely a strong contender for the Norris. Maybe not even in doubt. I think... Pretty even special teams. I don't think Nashville has that elite caliber goal scoring skill or that defensive skill. I think it's going to be a pretty quick series. But Nashville, if they were facing Calgary, I would give them the benefit of the doubt. But UC Saros' injury, I think, has me thinking that Colorado will be winning the series. I think it's going to be a pretty interesting one, though. If it was Calgary and Nashville, I think I would potentially have an upset. But because UC Saros is injured, I do not think I can really stay in goodwill that Colorado losing that series. Next one, Minnesota and St. Louis. So this one, a pretty interesting series. Minnesota getting Marc-Andre Fleury at the deadline. And he's been interesting for the Wild. For the Blues, Ville Husso has had a great year. And both of these teams have a very strong offensive skill. Kirill Kaprizov, one of the top point getters in the league, with uh, over 100 points. Let me check real quick. 108 points, 47 goals, and 61 assists. So a very strong season for Kirill Kaprizov. Vladimir Tarasenko as well, no slouch at all. For St. Louis. I think this series is going to be very interesting. I think Golden Duel might be a thing. I think Vili Husso, I think, is going to prevail in this one. I think St. Louis' the special teams also will prey on that weaker penalty kill percentage for Minnesota. I believe that they are bottom five in the league. And I think that Minnesota will not be winning this series. I think St. Louis and Minnesota will have the closest series of round one. But I will be taking the St. Louis Blues. I think this is going to be a nasty series. It's going to be series that might come down to those dirty goals. I think that's potentially a very, very tough series for both teams. A toss-up, really. And for me, I am going to pick the St. Louis Blues. I think that would be a good pick here. St. Louis in seven games. All right. 
Let's go to the next series. Calgary and Dallas. Now, for Calgary and Dallas, I think is going to be an easier one for me to pick. I think Calgary has shown this year that they've been a very, very good team to watch. And they've played a very, very trap style of game. Under coach Daryl Sutter. And for Dallas, I feel like they've played well down the stretch to get in the playoffs. But... Dallas has their glaring weaknesses, and they're one of the only teams with a minus goal differential. For Calgary, I think they have a very balanced attack, and they have a pretty good offense as well. Jake Markstrom may be getting best in the votes this year for one of the best goaltenders. Both best goaltenders in the league, a 922 save percentage this year, 2.22 goal since average. I think Calgary... Is definitely a very strong team, a good contender to go far in these playoffs. For Dallas, I think their special teams might be a part where Calgary can really strike. And Calgary has Johnny Gaudreau, the second most points in the league, 115 points on the year, so... Definitely a very potent offensive juggernaut there. And Calgary has pretty good defense as well. So I don't think it would be any surprise to see Calgary winning this one. Dallas doesn't really have that deep team yet. I don't think it's their time. And unless they catch lightning in a bottle, I don't think they're going to beat Calgary here. So I'm going to say Calgary wins this one in five games. Next one, Edmonton and L.A. Now this series features, obviously, McDavid and Dreisaitl. So, no surprise that Edmonton's going to come in here with a very potent offense and another very strong power play. For L.A., they played down the stretch very well, and they've made a good name for themselves. A team that has defied expectations and has done well to get in that third Pacific spot and keep it. So props to LA for getting into the playoffs and against Edmonton. I think Jonathan Quick might find another year against the Oilers. And when the Oilers don't score... They have trouble, and their depth, although has it has gotten better, I still don't think it's very good. I think McDavid and Dryside will carry the team still, and it's honestly not enough, I don't think, for Edmonton to really make it far in the playoffs just yet. The Oilers do play very well when they score a lot, but their defense and goaltending is still a bit shaky at times, and... Honestly, I think Jonathan Quick finds another gear in this series. Cal Peterson has played well, too. And LA special teams is definitely a thing to work on. But I do think that the LA Kings will be able to beat the Oilers here. As long as they can stifle their offense, this should be a very possible series to win for the LA Kings. And this is going to be the first time that the higher seed does not win the series. And I am going to predict that LA will take this one. So I'm going to take LA to win this series. And let's choose the number of games now. Colorado winning against Nashville in 5. St. Louis beating Minnesota in 7. Calgary beating the Dallas Stars in in five and LA beating the Oilers in seven. Okay, so now let's move on to the Eastern Conference. Now a very strong Eastern Conference this year for sure and let's start with Florida and Washington. Now, obviously Alex Ovechkin going on another run this year. What a year he has had 
for the Washington Capitals. Alex Ovechkin, really not slowing down at his age. I'd love to see it. Ovechkin, 50 goals this year. Great on him. For Huberto, I was also doing very, very well this season with 115 points, 85 assists on the year. For Florida, it's no surprise that they're here with their 4.14 goals scored per game. And their goaltending has been okay with Bobrovsky in net. Washington, I think, will put up a fight. I don't think they will fare very well against the Florida Panthers. I don't think they're able to stop Florida's potent offense. They're not the team to do that, I don't think. For Washington, I will, I'm curious to see who starts game one for Washington. Will it be Ilya Samsonov or Vitek Manacek? I think that's going to be an interesting topic. Maybe they'll both get some games. But I do not think that Washington is the team to beat Florida. But Washington might be able to stir things up. Of course, Tom Wilson exists. So Washington will put up a fight against the Florida Panthers, no doubt about that. So I'm looking forward to see what this one brings. I am going to take Florida to win the series. And now we'll take Florida to win this one in six games. Next series is Toronto and Tampa. And easily one of the more anticipated ones because Toronto is playing. It's the Maple Leafs, a team that is known to choke in the first round. But so is Florida. Florida hasn't won a series in 26 years since 1996. Toronto, not since 2004. Wouldn't it be nice if, if Florida and Toronto met in the second round and it's the battle of teams that choke first rounds? But anyway, Toronto and Tampa. Toronto, they score a lot. Very chaotic team. They allow a lot. Very chaotic team, as I said. I, I, I really feel for Steve Dangle, really cheering on this team. It's always a struggle, I think, watching Leafs games. I don't think no lead's ever safe with Toronto. And if, and if this series is Toronto and Florida... There is no way that Toronto would win that series, even if they were leading against Florida. They're known to really come back, even when they're 3-0, 4-0 down. They can come back. But Tampa, a very defensively minded team, even though Tampa has, hasn't done as well defensively this year with Andre Vasilevsky, having his second worst safe percentage of his career at a 9.16, which is pretty unprecedented. Having your second worst year at 9.16 safe percentage, still a pretty good year for Vasilevsky. And Matthews, 60 goals on this year. Stamkos also playing very well. 106 points for Stamkos. And for Matthews of 60 goals is also a very, very good achievement for Toronto. They have the first ranked power play. They have a decent penalty kill. Tampa, they are they are kind of known for uh, struggling down the stretch before playoff start. So it's no different for me. And of course we know Tampa's the looking for that three peat. Now, this is going to be a close series. Toronto with Jack Campbell and Eric Schalgren, I think. A little shaky at times. The defense, still a little shaky at times. Will Toronto have that injury in game one that we don't like to see? That wouldn't be something I would I would like to see. I think Tampa's just a little bit more consistent. So I'm sorry, Leafs fans, but I'm taking Tampa. So here I'm going to be taking Tampa and, of course, seven games. Because that's just how Leafs series ends. And the next series here. Carolina and Boston. Now, I think with Freddie Anderson out, Auntie Ranta confirmed to start game one. I think this would put a bit of a doubtful gaze towards the Hurricanes. But 
Let's not forget what Carolina has achieved this year. They have the number one penalty kill. They have Freddie Anderson, potentially a Vesna candidate. There's they score pretty at a pretty nice rate. Special teams are pretty good. They're pretty balanced overall. There's no huge superstar player. Aho, obviously, pretty good player. For Boston, of course, you have that first line of Marshan Bergeron and Pasternak, who's as good as ever. Boston did have their up and down season, but there's no bad team in the Eastern Conference. All eight teams are above 100 points, so they're all pretty elite, honestly. So, again, no teams in the playoffs are bad, and Boston's not one of them. Carolina's going to have their work cut out for them. I think they're going to need to score a lot. Boston doesn't really have that defining goaltender duel. I think the duel of goaltending for Boston is a little questionable, but we'll see if they can prove themselves in the playoffs. I think goaltending alone, Linus Allmark and Jeremy Swayman, all are, they have had good seasons. That's for sure. Too bad Tuka Rask couldn't stay for longer, but Carolina looks good for them, honestly. I think Carolina is their time to shine. They have a very balanced attack. They have good special teams. I think they'll really be putting a damper on the Boston Bruins parade, even though Boston has played some good hockey this year. That's for sure. I think Carolina is going to take this one. It's going to be pretty close, in my opinion. And yeah, I'm going to take Carolina to win this series. And the last... First round matchup is going to be the New York Rangers and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, obviously, we have that huge story of Igor Shesterkin getting potential Vesna votes. Honestly, it's pretty obvious that I think he should win the Vesna, and maybe even get some votes from the Hart if the Rangers go far. I think Hart's on the regular season, though, right? For Pittsburgh. Up and down season for them. And for the Rangers, they've had some balanced attack, I would say. They don't score a whole lot, but they do well enough. The injury to Tristan Jari, I think, definitely hurts Pittsburgh. And that's, I think, a main reason why I don't think they're going to win the series. But nonetheless, I think they'll put up a good fight. Sidney Crosby, Kenny Malkin... Of course, Jake Gensel, those players are still here, and they're always good, never bad. But I am going to take the New York Rangers to win this series. And for the games, Florida, uh, I'm taking them in six. For Tampa, taking them in seven. Taking the Carolina Hurricanes in seven. And I'm taking the New York Rangers over the Pittsburgh Penguins in six. Let's move on to round two. So, let's start with the Western Conference with Colorado and St. Louis. And Colorado, will they be able to get through the second round this year? Both of these teams have very strong offenses and very similar defenses. Uh, goaltending is going to be a pretty... Nice duel, Vili Huso for St. Louis and Darcy Kemper for Colorado. St. Louis is the superior special teams. I think that could be a somewhat of a deciding factor here. And Colorado is built around offense. I don't know how good they are defensively. Haven't watched them a whole lot. For St. Louis, sometimes they do struggle defensively. But if they can keep Colorado's offense at bay... This could end up being somewhat interesting. Now, I think this is where I make a hot take. Definitely a hot take. St. Louis. They look like a pretty strong team. 
I think Billy Huso wins the goaltending the goaltending duel. I think St. Louis is able to stifle Colorado's offense with their very strong special teams. I think it's not safe to say, but I would like to say that St. Louis takes the series. Yes. Hot take, I know. But I'm taking St. Louis to win this one. So we're taking St. Louis here. And I know it's going to be a tough one. And I could be proven wrong real easily. But St. Louis takes this one. Next one, Calgary and L.A. Now, I kind of really praised Calgary's defensive capabilities. And for L.A., I think the special teams will get exposed in this series. I think Calgary is a better team than Edmonton overall. And I think we'll see that in this series where L.A. just struggles defensively. I think it's, it's going to be tough, right? And Calgary is scoring a lot of goals. They have Jacob Markstrom in it. They have pretty good special teams. I think this one is going to be rather an easy one for me to predict. Now, great on the LA Kings for getting this far. Defying expectations. I just don't think LA has what it takes to beat the Flames. I think the Flames are due for a run this season. And I'm taking the Calgary Flames to win this one. For game totals, I'm taking St. Louis in 6 and Calgary in 5. So let's go to the Eastern Conference now. Battle of Florida. Now this is essentially a rematch of last season where Tampa Bay won their series against Florida pretty handily. And now that we're in the second round, is this the year that Florida breaks through on Tampa? Now Tampa has pretty good defensive capabilities. Victor Hedman now, are they the team to stop Florida? Potentially. But Florida, again, if they had three or four goals per game, looks good for them. And Vasilevsky has had a down year by his standards. And I think this could be where Florida takes advantage. Now, Tampa doesn't have any glaring weaknesses, but they need to score. And if they don't score against Bombrovsky, who... I have a little bit of faith in this year. Could be troublesome, but Florida's defense has been improving for sure. So I think Florida will be able to take down the defending cup champions. Florida's a good team. They've proven themselves. I think Florida is able to take this series. Take Florida in six games. For Carolina and New York, does Carolina have enough firepower to take down Igor Shesterkin? I think getting into the grill of Shesterkin will be a big one. Carolina's not really the most physical team, but I think causing some annoyance in the crease of the New York Rangers could put a halt to their playoff run pretty quickly. The Rangers have a pretty good power play. But Carolina's a very good penalty kill. And I think these two teams are both very good at keeping the puck out of their net. Freddie Anderson versus Igor Shesterkin. I think Shesterkin needs more experience in the playoffs. I don't know if it's their year this year. And I think Carolina does a good job here to take down the Rangers. I think it might be a close one as well. But I think the Rangers are one of, like, not going to lie, I think the Rangers are one of the weaker teams in the postseason. And I think Carolina can take down the Rangers in round two, in six games. St. Louis and Calgary in round three. Now, I did have St. Louis beating Colorado. But do I have them beating Calgary? So Calgary has a very defensively minded team, as I said. And St. Louis is a very offensively minded team as well. 
St. Louis does have the edge in special teams. But I think once Calgary jumps out to those leads, they keep them. And I think that's where Calgary shines. Even against a team like St. Louis. Billy Huso versus Jacob Markstrom in this one. And both teams are great teams. This could be another toss-up series. This one's going to go long. And I am going to take the Flames in this one because I do think that their style of hockey just is a good one. And Calgary going to the finals here in six games. Florida and Carolina. Now, Carolina obviously has Freddie Anderson. Florida has their very potent offensive skill. And... Honestly, for Florida, I think they're going to the finals. Carolina, sometimes they go up and down a little bit, and I do think Florida's offense can shut down Carolina here. Sometimes you just have to break through that number one penalty kill, and Florida, I'm going to take them to win this one in six games as well. Very safe, I know. Not Stanley Cup Finals. Calgary, and Florida. Not Colorado like a lot of you predict, but Calgary. I think it's their time for a good run. And for Calgary, their defensively-minded game against Florida's offensively-minded team is going to prove a very interesting series. I think if Florida can't score... Calgary's going to win. And Calgary has shown that they can shut down some very offensively powered teams with their shut down, lock down, trap game type of mentality. And we'll see if this works in Florida. Because I think Calgary has some decent special teams and I think they can maybe take advantage of that penalty kill for Florida and do a good job. So I am going to take Calgary as your Stanley Cup champions for 2022. As a Canucks fan, pains me to have to say that, but I'm going to predict that Canada does end up taking the cup this year. Now the tiebreaker. Now how many goals will be scored in this series? Let's take our calculator out and go back, go game by game here. So in game one, I'm going to predict three to two. Pretty, pretty nice win for Calgary. In game two, 62 for Florida. I think that's a little bounce back game for Florida. In game three, 2 1 Calgary. That's how Daryl Sutter responds. For game four, 5 2 Florida. In game five, 2 0 for Calgary. And in game six, 3 1 Calgary. I think it's pretty reasonable. So in total, it's going to come to a total of 29 goals in the final. So it's going to be a pretty defensively minded game for Calgary. But I do believe Florida will have those breakout games where they dominate Calgary. I think it's a pretty reasonable guess here. Calgary winning the Stanley Cup this year and yeah it's in 30 minutes 30 minutes have flown by so I hope you guys enjoy Stanley Cup playoff hockey the game ones are starting tonight at 7 p.m eastern time starting with Boston and Carolina stay tuned later for today where I go through some previews starting with Boston and Carolina I'll try to post that one as quickly as possible and, yeah, hope you enjoy the playoff hockey this year. It's been a nice year of normal regular season hockey and the Stanley Cup playoffs starting a little bit later than usual. But let's enjoy it. Let's enjoy the summer of hockey. 
and just have a good time. It's going to be very fun. Again, I think I don't think my brackets feel the hot takes other than the St. Louis, Colorado one. And yeah, I think that's basically it. LA and Edmonton, potentially. St. Louis and Minnesota. Not a whole lot of hot takes. That's fine. Alright, so it's basically going to wrap it up for our video today. Feel free to share your hot takes with me in the comment section below and berate me on what a poor job I've done and all that. And yeah, enjoy the hockey everyone. Hope you enjoy Stanley Cup hockey because it's going to be very exciting. And we'll see you soon.